My name is Linda Fortune. I came to the museum in the middle of 94, when it was in the museum here. I came as a volunteer to start on the streets exhibition. And um, I was employed late in the year, and I worked at the museum for 10 years as an education officer. So what made you decide to, to record this or doing these interviews? I was offered to do a course at UCT. I opted mm. to do a project on Table Mountain and what it meant to people that lived in District 6 mm. and how they mm. felt when they left District 6 when they were forcibly removed. This one really stood out for me. Um, Patrick, where were you born? In, uh, I was born in the Malay Quarter, but we moved to District 6 when I was a year old. But while you were in District 6, you were always very fond of the mountain. Yes. And, and how did you use the mountain? For rock climbing, hiking, or socializing? Well, before I, I met members of the mountain club, I was a very keen naturalist, and I secretly studied all the plants in the mountain, sketched it, couldn't afford a camera yet, couldn't afford paint, so it was just pencil sketches of dyes, proteas. Table Mountain was home, more so than District 6, as I spent most weekends on the mountain. Someone once said, if you put a roof over the whole of District 6, you're like one big family. We live as a very close community. Growing up in District 6 for me as a child was fabulous because we had so much. When I stepped out of my front door, the first thing I saw was Table Mountain. And I always longed to go up to the mountain. My brother took me with him because he belonged to Cape Province Mountain Club. And so I went up with him at 13 years old. And from there, I was hooked. And I was just blown away by the nature, the trees, the flowers, the fine boss, and the smells that, you know, stayed with me for a long time. Whenever I went up and I came home, I had a sense of achievement that I, um, you know, climbed the mountain and it shaped me who I am today. Table Mountain was our backyard. You walk out of your door and you could almost touch the mountain. And that was my first scene when I opened my door and I came out of my flat in the morning. Whenever I stood on that balcony, I was always focused on the mountain. Always on the mountain. The thing is, if you were born in this big sense, the mountain in all its majestic splendor was like a backyard. And then, of course, we became aware that we were going to be moved away. So um, what the government did, uh, people qualified for a home on the townships in accordance with the income of your family and also your racial classification. We had nowhere else to go. Our father died in March of 1971, and this was now in 1971. My mother then decided she will take the house. And if you compare life to District 6 to a Nova Park, it's almost like we were exiled out. And not because of a war or a natural disaster. It was all because of apartheid that we had to be separated, not only from the people in District 6, but our whole social life, our churches, our schools, our mountain, um, our work. And then we were sort of banished you know, to the outskirts of Cape Town. And why? We moved in in 71, and then one by one we got married, and then the one that stayed behind was my brother Roger, and he's still living in the original house. It's now Roger's house. Yes, yes this is the original house. So it was nearly yeah. the end of the year. I was 13 years old. 
and I, I didn't fully understand what, what is happening, but all around us, the, 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 the houses were being broken down. And we as kids, we used to play in the houses, but I didn't fully realize that it's going to come, that our turn is going to come. Because being a 13-year-old, you, you don't realize that. Mm. I had a close uh, connection to Table Mountain, and although we, we lived here, we, we still caught a bus and a train weekends. We still went to the mountain. At my age, you could be misled easily. And uh, spending weekends in, in, in the mountain and going on trips, there, there wasn't... It wasn't time for that. You know, we were older and we, we always took them with us, you know. Yes. And um, so the mountain offered us that freedom. If you're a parent here, you got to be hands on all the time. So you learn Peter can be any time of the night, you will hear gunshots and you already know if it's two guns or one gun, you know the, the sound of, of the guns. You know, when, when I came in here, I, I was thinking about my mother and, um, and what she had to go through. You know, raising all of us, even though we were adults. And um, she also experienced some trauma here. And um, my mother was never sick in her life when we lived in District 6. But like Roger mentioned, she, she suffered, he suffered stress, and I'm sure Joyce also. And it's here yeah, that my mother <laughs> developed diabetes, and she had to have three amputations because of the stress. And all of this is due to what happened because of apartheid and the forced removal. So we just had to move, move, move all the time. So we never even discussed the forced removals as a family. You know, when we came here that day, and we were here Christmas, and the first Christmas of 71 was so hard because we never heard a hooter. No one knocked on this door to wish us Merry Christmas. That Christmas, there was no new clothes. Oh. You and I cried. I couldn't understand. Why is it new clothes? These things that I can do to this house, <clears throat> which I can't afford, but it's, it's like I don't want to spend money here. I haven't got the roots here because I, I still feel that I don't belong here. My name is Junaid Wes. I'm 17 years old. I moved from Mandenburg to District 6 in 2013. My grandparents lived here and the stories that were told about District 6 back then was wonderful and you know I, I hope to carry on what was taught or learned back then in District 6. Yeah, because we moved here on the 20th of August, 2013. Eh? I stood in front of my door, I said, ah, we are back! <laughs> I am back! Yeah. Yeah. Well, we were excited to have um, our instituted house and um, after all these years, but we still had to get used to the place. Because it's a new concept. It's not the old district seat. There's something new about it. I always died in when you relocated to an Europe. Late 30s. You know, late 30s. Yeah, when, you, when you were young, what, what did you like normally do? Like maybe on a weekend or something? Table Mountain, Mountain. Was, was, was on the cards. We were there. 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 We
We explore all the divines and everything. We went one with a group of friends. They said we're going to stay overnight in one of the caves. So I said, no, but I must first go ask my father. I just can't go. The father said, yes, you can go. I know the people you're with and good friends. And uh, So we stayed overnight. We slept in one of the caves up there. It was exhilarating. It was beautiful to be up there. But now when you go there, I know probably just... Yes, that's true. Far from, it was far <laughs> from Cape Town, far yeah. from the There's no taxis. It was a very dreary place. But we had to stay there. We were forced there, and I felt very And that's bad. why they call it forced removals. Yeah. If more young people moved into the 66 from the Cape Platts, I do think there will be the same problems that, are, that people are faced in Manenburg, Bontyville, Mitchell's Plains, so those areas in the Cape Flats. They will encourage other youth in this area to do the same things that causes problems in the Cape Flats. What I think we should do to prevent that from happening is having organizations like hiking clubs, soccer clubs, any recreational facility to take their minds out of that mindset and get them into a new mindset of just encouraging them to do something with their life instead of gangsterism and drugs. See if you can point at the area more or less as to where you are staying. So we can either take it from this side or we can take it from this side. Do you think the other side will be better? Or look at the other side. Now you try and point it to me where you are on those areas there. Yeah. I'm staying about the... That's right. I'm about the... Now, okay, now you've pointed that out to me, okay? That looks good. You know what it looks like. Now we're going back to what it looked like originally. Wow. <laughs> now you try and figure yourself out where you're staying in that part of the world. <laughs> so that is District 6 in 1966. The Ogunok Center is not even there. Now, now you can imagine now this whole museum is about human rights violations and where people were kicked out of specific areas. And in your city of Cape Town, there were actually 42 areas of forced removals, but of which District 6 was the largest concentration of people being moved out, mm. where plus minus 60,000 of us oh, were yeah. taken from the center of the city and moved 15 to 36 kilometers outside of the city. So that is where your Manenbergs come in, where your Mitchell's Plains come in, yeah. and those areas, and people were taken out of the city mm -hmm. and then forced to move into those areas. Mm -hmm. Table Mountain was one of our playgrounds when we weren't playing soccer, or we weren't playing cricket. Mm -hmm. And over the, over the, especially over the um, Easter weekend, that would be the most favorite place to go because we used to go up on a Thursday and we come back on Monday. We used to stay all those days on top of the mountain. It was exciting. You learned a lot up there. You learned to respect nature. And you learned to respect each other's people because for five days you'll be living together in an area. So you learn to coexist and live in a space of harmony. But now you see here we are right below the mountain. Suddenly we are uprooted, broken up into different race groups and then placed into different areas, which now are called townships. And then we were placed this far away from the city so we can look across mm -hmm. and you can see those mountains in the distance. Now you can see how far away from the mountains we are then shifted. So there's a complete disconnection between where we were living and where suddenly we are placed. Not only were your schools, your churches, your sports clubs, your friends, your families taken away from you, but the mere fact a, a, a space that was free that was open, that didn't require any money, 
that you could walk to, now suddenly becomes inaccessible to you. What we have here, as you can look and you can see for yourself, can you feel the excitement mm -hmm. of being away? You're away from the city, but you're still in the city. Yes. The city's below you, but here you have these open spaces all around you. You're living completely free. The views you've got of the mountain, the views that you've got of the areas, the excitement of having to climb up rocks like that, although I didn't do that because that took a certain amount of courage. You can see that mal means what they do. And this is the view just below the cable station. We always used to go there as well. And you can see the whole city laid out below you. Absolutely beautiful. Now this is what our youngsters in the Cape Flats cannot get to. If we don't make an effort to get them to appreciate this kind of living and this kind of understanding and it's free. Okay, okay gents. I want to say thanks very much for coming to the museum. I hope that you were able to learn something. But I, always want to, I also want you to take it with you because I always believe one in the each one teach one policy. Take what you learned here today. See how you can encourage others to do exactly the same. And when you've done that, you've done my job for me. And this museum is not only about the past, it's how we can take it forward, how we can undo the damage that was done in the past. And as you as pioneers can take this forward and make the lives of other people easier. I do recall at Trafalgar Junior, as I walk down Mackenzie Street, I can see my, if I flashback, how the building started to go, how the friends, somebody had to move away. And so I do remember how that started. At stages we lived in Queens Road, we were building the Eastern Boulevard. So when we used to play Kimberly Jim, when you kicked that ball, it went all the way down to the main road. It was far. And hide and seek was hide and seek on the slopes of Devil's Peak. I am a second generation mountaineer as a result of my dad. He was always interested in the mountain. He belonged to the Scouts. And when they were 18 years old, him and his friends joined the Cape Province Mountain Club. Cape Province Mountain Club literally grew out of District 6 because many of its members were residents in District 6. It is a club that has a hut and table mountain, which you all know is an internationally recognized World Heritage Site. What is significant also about the club and, and its roots is that it's the first club not based on racial criteria right. in South Africa. And that, that's a significant thing to, to hold on to. And, you know, the founding members of the club struggled to, to get the club established, struggled to find a space on Table Mountain to call their own. Um, but it exists, and it exists for you also. Kind of concentrate on is that did this for cause a disconnection between kids and the environment? The environment yeah. And now the idea is the environment is now available, but the connection is lost. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to reconnect the kids with the environment again, so they can have kind of a, a positive impact on their lives. We were planning on now we, we got up Table Mountain, guys. Let's try Devil's Peak. We've been saying that, but then we haven't been starting the the plans or actions to make it, you know. So like this was a great opportunity for us. Are you from District Six? I moved in District Six. When you connect with me, you connect in with the old District Six too. <laughs> I lived in Reitovach, I didn't really climb, hike up mountains and go on adventures and things like that. So this is actually new for me. It makes me think deeper into the history of District 6 and how the, the children of District 6 in the old times used to hike up the mountains and how they enjoy the playground basically. Yeah, I'll definitely do it again.
I appreciate the views that we're getting up here from the mountain. I'm surprised at the amount of time that we took to get up here because it wasn't that long. And uh, I'm getting to experience the calmness of, and the tranquility of the outside world. When life gets busy, your mind is occupied constantly. You have not five minutes of standing outside looking at the sky. When you're in the mountain, it takes you away from the busyness. The tranquility, the sound of the water itself does something to your mind. And obviously, there's less chances of us being part of a gang here, being part of a crime or something. And it takes us away from all social illnesses in the communities. It let me different feel when I get the flat so I come home to the come. It's interesting and it takes me away from all that. I'm I'm not sure to come at all. It's something better to do than to live. Okay, I stop it. Table Mountain will always be, for me, the symbol of freedom because every other, during segregation, apartheid time, every other public amenity, park, open space was segregated, except for Table Mountain. Table Mountain was there, rising up above everything else, above the laws of apartheid. Table Mountain rose above it and allowed everybody to be free of it. You know, my love for the outdoors is birthed and nurtured in the streets of District 6. And so this is a great opportunity that, you know, we can pass on to this next generation that the love for the outdoors continues and then pass it on to their children and their children to their children. So we can get back the feeling of we've got a beautiful heritage that has to be looked after.